Hey Carol, thank you so much for letting us come to your house and see your rain garden. Well, thank you. I have been doing rain gardens since 2006 and I'm excited to have the students look at my rain gardens today and stop by in the future if they want to just take a peek and look around. Great, so show us, uh, show us around. Okay, so this particular rain garden over here on my right um, is my most recent rain garden. And um, it is planted with some Shenandoah grass that we have over here, uh, some wild hibiscus, or um, I guess it's called native hibiscus, right? Yeah, it's a native. Yep. It's a native. Um, and then in here, I have my very favorite. I love mountain mint. Um, I have it everywhere. In fact, in one of my older rain gardens, I'm going to be um, moving it to my perimeter garden in the backyard. Oh, I just love it. It's a beautiful little white flower. Does it smell even? It smells. Mm -hmm. Even right now. So if, in you, March. if you do come to visit, please just feel free to pop off one of the seed, seed tops and smell it. Um, a cone flower. Interesting that in the fall, the goldfinches just love the coneflower seeds. So uh, this is purple coneflower. Um, and back to birds for just a second. Um, this winter when we had a lot of rain, I know, uh, I'm sorry, snow. <laughs> I'm trying to get to spring already. Um, I noticed that the cardinals were actually perching on the hibiscus and were um, picking out the seeds oh, that's to cool. eat when we had that six or eight inches of snow. Um, I also have some aster in here and um, of course nodding wild onion and uh, blue lobelia. So this particular garden <clears throat> is also bermed, although I'll be working on the berm again. When you see the picture that Susan has uh, of it in full bloom, you'll be able to see the wild strawberry. Um, this has, needs a little bit of work this spring, so I will be um, repurposing that. Now, a lot of people have asked me about um, the overflow on this because this is my rain garden where I used one of the uh, landscaping companies that has gone through the training with the rain garden uh, group uh, for the county. And um, I wanted to use an underground system to take the gutter system and come in over to this location because otherwise I didn't really have a place that I could do a rain garden. Jeff so, Finley helped you with this, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jeff Finley helped me with it. Um, he was working for a company at that time that was doing that. So this one, they came in with a bobcat. I did not dig this. This is on clay. Um, when I perk this, it's usually good uh, and the water's usually perked within uh, about six hours. So um, this is... Wow. Six hours, even though you're on clay. Yes. Wow. That's fast. Yes. That's great. Yes. Those plants but are doing their I, job. I do know what we're on clay because I did dig my first rain garden in 2006, which was part of the um, project for the county for to see if homeowners would be interested. So although I got help with the design and the size, I dug it myself. So I can guarantee we're on clay. <laughs> uh, but people often have questions about the overflow for this. So um, the overflow is actually here near the driveway, but I wanted to point out that what we've done here is um, the overflow comes here to this corner, but then we dug out an area of about a foot square as far down as we could get and uh, put in some, just some rock so that when it does overflow, it fills up. I don't think we can really call it a cistern, but it kind of fills this area up a little bit before it flows into the, um, it, you know, uh, down the sidewalk. Uh, this will hold, this has held rain uh, because it takes a very great part of my roof so there's a lot of water that fills this garden um, it will take and hold about two inches uh, for a couple of hours um, while it's still gently overflowing so everything in here has um, really i have not needed to do any kind of watering except when it was first planted uh, the as you can see um, i leave my cleanup until spring which is nice because I get to shake out everything and uh, plants get to reseed. And what I anticipate I'll be doing with this garden eventually is actually taking out some plants to share with others or repurpose in other places in my yard.
Yay! I love sharing plants. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, and you know, um, so your overflow goes to the sidewalk, but before you built this rain garden, the whole roof, the whole gutter went onto your driveway and then onto the sidewalk. That's correct. So you made it better. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this does hold uh, a lot of water. Again, it's deeper than uh, my oldest rain garden. Um, basically, I don't, as you can see, I don't have much slope here, but because they had to do the piping underground, they had to make sure that the piping from the house to the rain garden was at a slope where we, there wouldn't be standing water. Right. So this does look deeper, and if you come to see it, feel free to step in it. It is deeper than the other rain garden. And it, but it doesn't look deep. I mean, it it right. just looks like a garden. Right. Yeah, it's just full of leaves and right. and that's okay. Leaves. Yeah, I let it. Right. Like I said, I really let it go for the winter. The animals love it. The birds, and of course, many of these plants have insects that are um, wind overwintering. So that's another good reason um, to consider leaving your gardens go until May. Let's overwinter and just enjoy also the beauty of some of these in winter throughout the various seasons with snow and um, it's just a beautiful thing to look at out my window. Yeah, I bet it's so pretty with snow. It is. <laughs> yeah, even though we're, I mean, it's March, but it's still really the depths of right. winter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Carol, for giving us a tour. Sure, thank you and please stop by. <laughs>